Dear friends and family back home, I've been thinking about all the things we used to do together. All the little moments that I didn't realize meant so much to me. Our conversations, struggles, and adventures that gave me so much joy and showed me who I wanted to become. Someone with a love of honor and bravery in the face of fear. Not just for my friends, but anyone in need. I knew even then that God gave me a desire to protect, to shield those who are oppressed and fight back against evil. And I feel like now I am doing what I was meant to do. I don't regret that I might need to lay down my life for this cause, because I am doing it so that you can continue to live in peace. And I am honored to serve alongside my brothers and sisters in arms who have given me hope day after day when things have felt so dark. And even though I don't know what will happen tomorrow, I trust that God has a plan for me and my service to this country. I know you're worried, but if something happens to me, you must remember this. My death will not be the end of my life. It will endure into heaven because the same God who inspired me to defend others carried out the ultimate act of love by dying for my salvation. And I know that whether I return to you safely or find peace in the arms of Christ above, I will have served honorably. Thank you so much for your love and your remembrance. It means more to me than I can say. I love you and I'll see you soon. You can stand and sing if you want. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the peace. Pride from every mountainside, let freedom ring. I cry, if country, the land of the noble free, lift me my I love the rocks and rills, the woods and trampled hills. My heart with rapture great above. God to the Panther of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light, protect us by thy might. God, our King, protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Oh, oh, oh.
say, can you see? So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streamed. pray this morning as many people have given their lives uh, for our country this great nation I pray Lord God that we would never forget what uh, you've given us in this freedom that we can come here and freely worship so I pray Lord Jesus that you'll just be with us this morning as we sing these songs and be glorified and be lifted up I am thine, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice and told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of thee and be closer drawn to thee. Come, me now in thy service, Lord, by the power of grace. When I need a God with the steadfast hope and my weary heart is thine. Nearer, nearer, to the cross where the house died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. of our heart. 
You know, so many people gave their lives for us, and they do it every day. And we call these people heroes. I can't think of a greater hero than Jesus Christ. He gave his life. He took abuse, just like some of our servicemen. But something, he rose again, and he's alive. And he lives in our heart. And let's, let's just be drawn to him this morning. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me Go ahead and be seated just for a minute. Are there anyone here, is there anyone here who has served in the military? Would you please stand? We want to thank you. Where is David at? I don't know if David did too. We want to thank you for your service. You can go ahead and be seated. There's a, when we think of uh, D-Day and we think of the f men and women that died or the men that died on that beach and the, we think of every war passing from the Korean War to the Vietnam War. It isn't just thousands of lives that have been lost over the time, it's been millions of lives. And people, young men and women gave their life and died and they didn't get to enjoy the things we enjoy today. It's because of their sacrifice we're here. Some people think I'm too patriotic. Some people think I put the flag before Christ. That's not it at all. Christ is always number one. Christ is why we live. But Christ also blessed us to have the freedoms that we have so that we can come and worship freely in this house and in our country for now. But if we're not careful, we're going to very, lose the very freedoms all of the generations fought for us to have. And so as we just sing this morning, as we remember all those who have served and died, let's remember the one who truly died for us that have right. um, eternal life. Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross, the ultimate death. And so he is our way. He is the way for us to get to heaven. He's the way maker. Amen. So as we sing these next songs, I want you to worship him like the Bible says, spirit and in truth. And so you can sit, you can kneel, you can come to the altar, you can stand, raise a hand, whatever you feel like God is leading you to do. But worship him this morning as we, as we sing this song.
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, Lord. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Yes, you are here, and you're healing every heart. Lord, I worship you, and I worship you. Oh, you are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here and you're mending every heart, I worship you and I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Lord, that is Yes, that is who you are. 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 Amen. Even when I don't feel that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. stop working you never stop you never stop working way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 that is who you are. One more time. That is who you are. You are my That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You are here. Moving in on me. I worship you. I worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you've done this morning as we stand on holy ground worshiping you. Praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and be seated just for a minute. We want to welcome all our guests here this morning. Amen. Thanks for being here. We hope that you're blessed and we hope that uh, you enjoy the service and the singing and worshiping God. This thing is just not working right very good i'm like going like this it keeps going down further and further no it'll be all right um but we want to thank you for being here and i hope that you're blessed and it's so good to be in the house of the lord every sunday and this is a time that we um we actually pray for the offering um we don't pass the plates here right now we haven't done that in quite a while actually uh the plates are in the back so make sure you put your tithe in the in the plate if you're here our guest just be our guest, okay? Um, and just enjoy the, the service. So, uh, but we want to recognize the um, the tithes and offering in Malachi. You know, it, it teaches us that we're to give back to the Lord. Um, 
and we're to give back to him, and not just, uh, you know, Paul said, give according to what's on your heart, but really a tithe means tenth. Um, the pastor told me, I've said this before, a pastor told me once, he goes, um, let me tell you where somebody spends their money, and I'll, I'll tell you where they spend their time. And uh, it's kind of true, isn't it? And, and so as we just give back to God, remember it's, a, it's an act of worship, okay? It's, it's not just, uh, you know, me wanting an airplane, okay? Like some, <laughs> I could meet, mention a few names of pastors who want just big stuff, right? I don't care about that. What I want is God's word to go out. And so it helps us advance that gospel, and plus it helps us to be obedient to him. And, uh, you know, I'm not into all that pro prosperity preaching where if you give it, he's going to bless you back with a red Ferrari. That's not necessarily true. Okay, but we are called to be obedient to him. And so as we give and we pray this morning, let's just ask God to multiply this uh, to the kingdom this morning. Lord, we thank you for all the faithful givers that are here this morning and the faithful givers that don't, they don't give, just give to the church, but many charities around uh, to help the, the lost and the poor. And I pray, Jesus, that you'll just um, be with them this morning, be with us this morning, and take the offering that we give and multiply it to your kingdom. That's what we pray. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the offering, Lord, is, is something we do as an act of worship, not begrudgingly, but we give freely because it is your word to, to do. It's, it's a command to do. Uh, give unto Caesar, Caesar's and give unto God's with God's. And I pray, God, that we just give it back to you. Thank you for the blessings that you've given us that we can sit in this place today and, and drive our cars and have air conditioning, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all those things. Um, they're just blessings. And, Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you'll just be with it today. Uh, multiply it. And I pray that it would just reach our communities and around the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. new song. You can stand and sing with us. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. All who gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And all the angels, all creation cries, oh.
the great as your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name, it stands before them. just for a minute. <laughs> That's good. He's learning. That's it's a lot of pressure. I'm ah, sorry I had to stop down in the middle of that. It's great Don't to get stress the devil out, man. A black eye, you know it. <laughs> I messed that up, not you. I got you off beat. Now all the eyes awesome. are awesome. We'll move on from there. <laughs> oh my. Nothing ever goes perfect. Except the preaching. And if you believe that, you probably find another church at that point, right? Here we go. You know, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I have been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing this out to him. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire, the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I have known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God all my life, Lord, all my life. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Your goodness, Lord. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. Thank you and praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Stressing out over there, man, and I just couldn't let him just. Good job, Ash. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I you solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. Support and defend. Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And then I will obey, I'll obey the, orders of the orders of the President of the United States, the United States and the orders of, and the orders of those, officers those officers appointed over me, appointed over me according, to regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Code of military justice. So, help so help me God. celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I, the armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact, but somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, 
in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion, may our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and born by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. Amen. I don't put the American flag above Christ, but I am thankful that we have a country that we can come and worship freely in because they were fighting for something. We're a nation on its first document, basically, the Constitution of the United States. And it's because of all those who sacrificed that, that I, get, I have got to live my life. I've got to raise my family, something they never had a chance to do. And not only were they fighting for just those freedoms, they were fighting for uh, the freedom of faith and religion so that we could come and worship God freely and not have to worry about doors being busted down or having some underground church somewhere. But unfortunately, for this day that we live in the country and the world and the turmoil that the world is in, if things don't turn around, we're soon going to lose the very freedoms we fought so hard for. And every generation that fought for the, gener for, for the freedoms that we have will be fought in vain. It seems that man and humanity always goes back to the same thing, to its own corruption. It looks within, believes that everything they've achieved in life is because of what they've done. But really it's only the, with the blessing of God and the ability that God has given us and the talents and the spiritual, those who are in Christ, the spiritual gifts that he's given us that we achieve anything. The only reason we achieve anything is because of what God has given us. There's no other way to achieve it. He gave us life, he gave us breath, he gave us talents, and he gave us, for those who are in Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit to complement the talents that you have. 
And so as we celebrate the Memorial Day weekend, I couldn't help but think about all the campers that are down here at Michigan Valley Community Church and about those who are camping over at Melbourne and around the lakes and stuff, enjoying this particular day. And they couldn't put one day aside for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's for all of the freedoms that they fought for, that they get to do, we get to do the things we get to do. I'm not saying those are bad things. I'm saying, you know, go be with your family. Go camping. Enjoy. If somebody says, I'm not going to be there Sunday because I'm going to be on vacation with my family, you know what I say? Go be with your family. God Family Church. Go be with your family. But as we celebrate today and tomorrow and the rest of this year, as we remember the freedoms that we have in this great United States of America, let's never forget the freedoms that we have in Jesus Christ. That's the greatest freedom at all, of all. That we can come on the first day of the week, celebrate Jesus Christ, so that we can have salvation through His Son. The world's in bondage. The world is in shambles. It's captivated by its own sin. And the world always returns to that sin. The world seems to want to indulge in the immorality of... They, they think it's, it's, it's okay. It's truth. I was saying this morning in Bible study that truth is... Well, you know, There's only one truth. is Christ is God through His Word. But everybody's looking for truth aren't they? Everybody's looking for truth. Everybody's looking for the truth. And we live, and I was just sharing this, and uh, you know, we're, we're living in this world now where the big tech companies want to censor those that speech which they disagree with, so there's only one narrative. Well, what truth should we be believing then? Where is truth? There's one truth, one way, one way to heaven, Jesus Christ. There's only one word. And that one word is the word that spoke everything into existence. God. There is nowhere else to work. There's nowhere else to go. We have this great opportunity in this country and around the world to, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's fading fast. And it won't be long before the church, they will do everything they can to silence the church to make the church be quiet because the church holds the real truth in their hands, the Bible, the, the whole Word of God. And, and so the world doesn't like that truth because it's really hard to control that truth. Now, we could go back and look at COVID and all the lies that were spread during the time of COVID. We could look at the lies that all the lockdowns, now that all the data's coming out now where six-foot distancing didn't do a thing. Masks were ineffective. Even if you had an M95 mask, all the data's coming out now. Maybe they didn't know, but aren't they the ones that's supposed to know? The ones that are pushing all the vaccines, the ones that are pushing everything? The world lives in lies. And the way, the way they get people to accept the, the lie is to instill fear in people. If you can instill fear in people, you can control them. I was never afraid. The reason I was never afraid, because whether I live or die, that's gain for me. I'm not saying... Go throw yourself off a bridge and say, God, catch me on the way down. That would be foolish. But there is a level of faith that we should have in God that the next flu epidemic that's coming up, the bird flu, you've heard of it, right? Now it's, I don't know, more lies, more control. You decide, you do what's right for you. 
But my faith is in Jesus Christ. And I believe that he's got the whole world in the palm of his hand. The whole universe. The ones who created it. So I label this, this message today, and I don't know how many of the notes I'm actually going to get to today, but living in a lost world. How do we live in this lost world? How do we live in this world that, that you know, where there's no truth and there's just lies? Well, we do it by knowing who you are in Christ. But you've got to know something. That living in Jesus, living in Christ, will cost you something. Salvation's free, right? Come to the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, and what? You will be saved. The Holy Spirit comes in us and dwells in us. But with that, there should be repentance. There should be fruit in your life because you're following God and you love Him more than anything else in the world. And I really do. I want to love God so much that nothing else matters. I love my family, but God comes first. My wife and I tease each other all the time and, you know, uh, about that. He goes, well, I'm number one. She goes, no, you're not. I go, well, you're number one. No, no, you're not. God's number one. Because we put God in the center of all that we do. God's way. Are we perfect at it? No. We have issues. We have our problems. But who doesn't in this world that we live in and the corruption and the separation we have from God from birth? We come now to this point where we give our life to Jesus. Salvation, yes, is free, but that there will be a cost to that walk. You have to forsake everything that you used to do. It says, the old things pass away, all things become new when you give your life. push forward to the gospel. We push forward to Christ. We push forward to, to, to get the things behind. And we push forward so that others can see Christ in us. You know, you might be the only Bible somebody ever reads. And our job in this lost world is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we come upon the end times, things are going to get worse and worse and worse before they get better. But we have a job to do, and that is to proclaim the gospel. Serving God isn't easy. Most of the time, in our world, it's not even going to be popular. It wasn't in the time of Christ or the apostles, was it? Never has been. The gospel of Jesus Christ is rejected. And we rejected it in this country. We Kicked God out of schools. You know, I heard a question posed one day when one of the school shootings had happened. And somebody asked, God, where were you? And says, well, I would have been there, but you kicked me out. That doesn't mean God wasn't present in the lives of those who were believers there. It was just an allegory, an illustration of what we've done. We've turned our back on God. And I could give you the court cases for that. We've done that in the past. But when Jesus started his ministry, from the very moment he was born, they wanted to kill him. From the very moment he was born, they wanted him out of the way. Yeah, the, ca- the crowd would gather around him. They could hear him, they could see him, they could touch him. But to follow, well, that's a different story. To hear Christ, to know his words, to understand what it says is one thing, but to literally commit your life to Jesus Christ is something else. That's living in him, living for him, no matter what. That he is the priority in your life. 
We have this great and wonderful country where we can come because of those who have given their lives for it that we can come and worship Jesus. We celebrate on the first day of the week. That's why we come together on Sunday, the first day of the week. Every week we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus started his ministry in his hometown, but when he ended up going back to his hometown, he wasn't even welcomed there. He wasn't welcomed. Let's look at our scripture verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Let's pray first. Lord, I pray, God, this morning that you'll just help us to see your word this morning. Lord, infiltrate our heart, Lord. Help us to, to understand our calling. Help us, Lord Jesus, to know our purpose. And then give us the courage to go and do what we are to do for your kingdom. And I pray, Lord Jesus, you just give us wisdom this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. The very first words of this is, the, is for your calling. It says, for you see your calling. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I didn't understand the calling, really, other than when I gave my life to him, I knew I was changed. I knew I was different. I knew I wanted something that I didn't have. And I, and I prayed, and I didn't know how to cross that bridge. I didn't know how to get from where I was to where Christ was, where God was. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I just didn't understand how to get there until somebody explained it to me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody come unto the Father except through me. So Jesus was doing one of two things. He's either telling the truth or... in my heart and in my life and I'm going okay what is it because I wasn't raised believing that so if Jesus is the only way and then the light bulb comes and goes okay well if that's it then everything about him everything that he did every miracle he performed every every word he he spoke had purpose and meaning and that he is the only way. And I wanted to follow him from that day forward. And I gave and committed my life to Jesus Christ when I was 16 years old. I've had my, my share of troubles along the way. I gave you some of the experiences I had in church. To me, in my early age, in my late teens and early 20s, church was nothing but a big disappointment. I could see the church and Christians saying they believe in God, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they sure weren't acting like it. They sure didn't, they sure didn't uh, um, uh, appear to be what they said they were. And then I saw a church fall, and another church fall, and another church fall, and disband. And two of them I was in, and I watched it before my very eyes. Going, what is this all about? What is my calling? What is my purpose? Why am I here, Lord? One church, we were attacked so badly personally, my wife and I. We were an elder. We were leading worship. We were attacked so badly that I wanted nothing to do with the church again. You ever felt that way? You ever look at the church? The church says it's this, but then it acts like that? We are to be authentic Christians, believing that Jesus Christ died for us. We are to live, we are to speak, we are to walk in His commands. If you love Him, you will want the world to see Christ in you. And so we went to another church. We went to a church, and you know what I told my wife then? I said, you know what, we can come in late and we can leave early. We don't have to know a soul. And the previous church, you know what the previous church, the pastor there, he goes, have you ever thought about preaching? And after that experience, I said, there is no way I will ever be a pastor or preach in a church. Never tell God no. I didn't want to. You know why? Because 
as human beings, be honest with yourself. Be on, I have to be honest with myself. We are messed up. And our heart is always being pulled into unrighteousness. But in God, we should want righteousness, not unrighteousness. And so we have to continue, stay off all the sinful nature of the, of the heart and go into and look toward God and for righteousness. We need to look to Him. We have to understand what our calling is. What has He called you to do? And so, you know, for 20 years, 20, 18 years, I heard the call but I refused to do it. I had a good job. God blessed us. I never was laid off. I always had income. And God was just waiting, just waiting. He knew one day, he knew when, because he knows everything, right? And though I resisted all those years, I mean, as a quality aerospace engineer, I was doing pretty good. But God said one day, you know what happened? To understand the calling is one to submit. Submit to Him. And say, Lord, whatever You want me to do, that I will do. Are you willing to submit to Him? Because submitting means, and it's not easy being a Christian, submitting means giving it all for Him, no matter where it leads. And so we came to Kansas in the year 2000. Been here 24 years. Love it here. We love the open plains. I miss some of the mountains and pine trees, but you know what? I sure don't miss the rain. We got rain last night, but it's not the rain of Seattle where it just rains every single day. Yeah, who said it smells good? Oh, snow. Well, that's another story. Okay, we won't get involved in that one. I, I love the snow so much. But we moved to Kansas here and then we went to church after church after church. Have you done this? Have you been looking for a church? And there's just no life. Where's the life of the church? And, and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of maybe a little different. When I, I get so passionate about, the Jesus, about Jesus Christ, about the, the, the salvation that comes through him, that I can't contain it. And, and people think I get angry and I'm mad. I said, no, no, this is just exciting stuff. Why aren't you excited? You know, and everybody's just kind of, hmm, what? Why aren't you excited like I'm excited? You should be excited for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we went to church after church, and we just couldn't find the right church. We looked for a long time. And then I had what I call my JFK moment. And this is something I think that we should all consider and ponder. Don't ask what the church can do for you. What can you do for the church? Changes your whole perspective. We went to a church, and we, we went in there. Not a lot of life in it. We looked around and goes, what is it they need? Oh, they don't have a youth. And then they asked, they, figured, they found out that I led worship, started the worship there, and, and uh, we started with one youth. We're rebuilding here with our youth. So if you have a calling for youth, we can use you. Okay? Come talk to me, please. But, we got in there and, and we had one youth and this one youth, was, I was kind of an outsider. They, they, she was raised in the church and she didn't want anything to do with me. She didn't like me. I didn't start off really good, but uh, I, I won't go. I, I was joking around with her and, and it didn't go real well. And so, be careful what you say when you say it. You know, there's timing for all that stuff. <clears throat> and so, we just jumped in. We started going all over. This was in Ottawa. We started going all over. But in, in about a year and a half to two years, we had 60 kids in Awana from one. We had 60 kids in Awana. We had 30 in the youth group. We had 90 kids coming in Ottawa. And to this day, some of those ministries are still going on. When I started looking at church that way, and it was about 2002, and I told myself I would never do this, that I wasn't going to go back to college, it was kind of brutal getting through it the first time. Why do I want to go do it again? And so, as you know, uh, I went back to college, got a theology degree, and finished in 2007. And in 2009 or something, I just said, God, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. 
here I am 15 years later. Praise the Lord. It was a journey, though. We're still trying to figure out, and that's the beginning. It says, for you see your calling. Sometimes we don't see our calling. We hear the nudging. We hear God calling us. We hear God saying, hey, you need to go over here. You need to go over there. You need to step in and help. You need this. But you know what? We, we hold back. No, I don't want to. I've been hurt in church. There's too many hypocrites in church. And I always tell you this, and I keep reminding you, of it, if you know of a perfect church, do not go there because you will mess it up. It's, it's just, you know, because we can't, we, there is no perfect church. There's no perfect pastor. There's no perfect leader. We're all human beings caught in this, un, in, in this imperfect world, caught in these imperfect bodies. Praise the Lord, one day we'll be resurrected and have perfect bodies. And we're living in this, uh, with, with an imperfect heart, always Satan, always attacking us, trying to pull us back into the world. And we've got to fight it every single day. But we have this wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ, that says, you know what? You endure it. You get through this. Because our pains and our, our, our uh, uh, difficulties are real. All of us go through different difficulties in life, and we're trying to ask God to go, Lord, the church is kind of messed up. The people in the world are kind of messed up. The government's kind of messed up. And the whole world's going to, you know, where in a handbasket. Right? And we're trying to figure this out, and our life is just kind of in shambles. Sometimes we bring on problems, and sometimes problems just kind of find us through other people or a situation or circumstances. And we're just trying to find our calling, and we're, we're, we're kind of wandering through this. But you know, when you finally get a hold of that calling, and you know God is tugging you to go that direction, don't resist. I did it for a long time. Just go where God calls you to go, wherever that may be, and go be a servant for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Know your calling. It goes on here. You see your calling, brethren. Okay. That not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen what? The foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Remember what I said last week? The, 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 the message of the cross is foolishness to the world. They think they're wise in their own mind. They don't need the cross. So, so, and it's same in, in the time of, of Christ. He was trying to tell them what was going to happen. That was foolish talk to them. Blasphemy, they would say. So the, 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 the message of the cross is foolishness to the, world, to the world. But what's God going to do with the foolishness of the world? Let's get, look at it again. That, uh, that not many wise according to what? The flesh. You cannot be wise here in the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things of the mighty. Those that the, the world calls small, those are the mighty ones. Isn't that crazy how God does this? It goes on in verse 28. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. You see... The Christians are despised, but God has chosen us, which is foolishness to the world, to be the wise. All the wiser. Because we're in Christ. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing things that are. That no flesh, that's the flesh, that's the heart, that's our thinking. No flesh should glory in His presence. We should never walk around puffed up saying, look how good I am. Look what I've done. Look at the accomplishments that I've made. Nothing. You leave it all behind. But in Christ, you have everything. Because when you die, you have it all. You leave the foolish things of the world behind and you go and be in the presence of God forever. Place to be. Verse 29 again, that no flesh should glory in His presence, but of Him you are in Christ Jesus who become for us what? The wisdom of God. Read that again. Listen to this. But of Him you are in Christ Jesus. That's believers who became for us what? Wisdom. 
If you're in Christ, you have wisdom. If you're in Christ, you have the wisdom of God. That is wise. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Did you hear that? Because of that, because of the wisdom that you have in God, you have righteousness, you are sanctified, you are saved, and you have the redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory how? In the Lord. In Jesus Christ. And so, sorry Tom, I'm going to script a bunch of scriptures here that you worked so hard to put in the system. <laughs> he comes in and puts all this stuff in there. When Jesus went to the synagogue, when he went there, he pulled out the book of Isaiah. And he read from the book of Isaiah. And this is um, what it says, okay? Scroll from Isaiah, Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart and proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And if you would look down a few verses later, in verse 28 through 30, they, were, they would um, be filled with wrath. And they would be filled with anger. Not too far down. But it says, Luke 4, 28 and 30 says, So those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to uh, the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went away. He just kind of like, what, turned around and they probably go, where'd he go? Right? The leaders of today in our world is no different than the leaders back in the time of the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees and the scribes. They were more worried about their power and their money than they were of anything else. And we just got done with the life of Paul and Acts in our Bible study. And uh, no matter what situation Paul was in, no matter how bad the situation got, he was always preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we have to see our calling. We have to know what it is God has called us to do. This, that the kingdom advances, the kingdom of God advances not by men, not by any preacher, not by any word that I can even speak, not by anyone who has studied or has received their PhD or diploma, it doesn't advance by any political method or any kind of government. It advances through only knowing Jesus and being obedient to Him and move through the moving of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Not by might, nor by power, but by My Spirit, says the Lord. His Spirit. His Spirit. And so... We get this um, calling on our heart and we resist it for so many years. Jesus went through His whole life. He, he did miracle after miracle. He preached you know, uh, the kingdom of heaven. He, he preached Himself. But they put Him on a cross anyway. They opposed Jesus when He healed the paralytic and forgave sins in Luke 5.17. They opposed him for eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners in Luke 5, 27-39. They opposed him when he permitted his disciples to pluck the heads of grain and eat them on the Sabbath. Remember they were doing this? That would have been against the, the, the Jewish law. They opposed him for healing a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath in Luke 6. And one miracle after another miracle, after his teachings, they always opposed him. They always opposed the apostles. And the world is no different today. And so when you go out into this 
uh, this, this world that is all filled with the, the immorality and the, the muck and the mire, it's going to reject it just like they rejected it back then. But you go anyway and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and know that your hope remains in Him and Him alone. It's in Jesus. And then you have your election. I was going to get in a little bit. I don't have time today to get into predestination because the hour is late. So, um, but let me just say this. And you can go look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and you can look at t- destina- uh, predestination and, and a calling. Some would say that the predestination means that God has already predestined those whom He's called. Well, we already know that it is um, <clears throat> the calling of God. He has to call you. But let me tell you, He's calling for everyone. Now remember, I, I give this timeline. Here we are on this timeline. We have a time we're born. We have a time that we die. And we're, this world is, is on this timeline. God doesn't live on this timeline. He can, he can interact with our timeline. But God, as I've said, is in time and out of time at the same time. So therefore, God looks backwards, forwards, and into the present. And He knows already who will and who will not give their life to God. But everybody has a calling. God is kind of prompting, but He already knows who will and who will not receive Him. And so when you get into predestination, people go, well... About my free will. You still have a free will. He already knows that He's going to take your free will and reject Him. But it's in our free will that we receive Him. Because He doesn't want a robots. He wants a relationship, which is why He sent His Son to begin with. So make your election sure. Make your election sure. Let me kind of end maybe with Romans 8.28 here. Okay? Romans 8, 28. Do you got that one up, Tom? 28 through 30 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who what? Love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew. How did He foreknew? Because He can see the future. He knows the past. He knows you before you're even born. Which is my dilemma because I'm sitting there kind of going... So God, you knew I was going to be preaching all this time? Yep. Well, why did you make me go through all that stuff? Why didn't we just go right into it, you know? You had a free will. I was just I was calling, calling, calling. I had to wait for you to turn around and follow me fully. See. And so in verse 29 it was those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. <clears throat> and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. If you know Jesus Christ, guess what? You got a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. You can personalize that, right? And it's mine. And, and we have, our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. <clears throat> and so you know what we should do? You know what we are called to do? You know what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to live our life the best that we can for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will anybody be in heaven because of you? Because of your calling? Because of your um, um, bravery? Your courage? I can't imagine what it would have been like on D-Day, or any front line for that matter in all the wars and the conflicts we've had. The fear of being on the front lines. But you know, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you're already on the front lines. But don't be afraid. The Bible talks about us putting on the full armor of God which gives us... uh, the, uh, the imagery of warfare. We are in a spiritual war. And so, what we need to do is put on the full armor of God and we need to press forward in courage 
and go toward the battle. Christians aren't to regress. When Jesus preached, he was always confrontive. In love and compassion, only Jesus could preach the way he did. But you know what? Just like John the Baptist, him, he, called them, he called the religious leaders out. He goes, you brood of vipers. He didn't hesitate. He didn't hesitate. Okay, come on up. <clears throat> so, when we remember our service men and women and our families, and it doesn't have to be just servicemen, remember your own families, those who have passed on. Know that the American flag represents something. It represent, represents freedom. That we can come and Worship Christ freely. Don't be afraid of it. You know, they want, they want to make us ashamed of, of being proud of the country that we live in, to being proud of the men and the women who died for us. And then also, you can be um, proud of, of your salvation in Christ. Don't be afraid of it. We have this great banner in our life, Christ. Don't be afraid of it. We have a great country. And so therefore, I'm never going to apologize. Have we been perfect? No. Have we had a problem? Of course. Always will. I'm going to hold off on that just for a minute. We always will. Okay? Because we aren't perfect. We aren't perfect. So what I want to do is I want to open up the altar for just for a minute, okay? And if you have an area of your life that you're struggling with, will you just come at the altar and lay it down and be really honest and get really serious with God? Would the elders come up for just a minute, please? And we'll pray with you, lay a hand on you. But come up here and just lay it at the altar. If you're struggling with something in your life and you don't know how to get over it, let us pray for you. Come to the altar and surrender it. There's there's no fairy dust up here, okay? We still have to make a a commitment. But just take a minute. If you don't know Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, never assume anybody's everybody's saved. Come and give your life to Christ. We'll pray with you. But come on up to the altar or just pray where you are. It doesn't matter. And just give a moment to Christ and say, Lord, whatever I need to surrender, I would surrender it to you. Let's, let's do that just for a moment.
have decided. I have decided. Amen. Go ahead and stand up. Follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Lord, thank you for this day. I pray, God, you'll be with everyone here. As we enjoy these next couple of days, I pray, God, that families come together. But most importantly, if we remember the celebration of the free country you've blessed us with, that we would continue to be in prayer for our leaders. But I pray, Lord God, most importantly, we would celebrate you and we would not forget why we exist. The purpose is to glorify your holy name. So, Lord, I pray, God, you be with everyone here. Keep them in their comings and goings. Rest this week, Lord, and bless them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Kay.